All right, so in this lecture, we are going to cover the uh, university pre-health office recommendations. Um, so this is obviously, you can see at the bottom right there, that this is uh, primarily utilized uh, by students who are currently enrolled in a university. So graduated pharmacists might not have access to this kind of content. Um, you know, but I still encourage you, if you do, that you should reach out to your university pre-health office to kind of get all, answer any specific questions you have um, they might be able to kind of look at your application and give you hands-on advice on things you can do. Um, they might help you manage missing prerequisites and organize your thoughts. Um, now, you won't be formally enrolled in the pre-health track, so they might actually offer that option to you. Um, so, you know, personal story for myself, um, you know, one of the uh, pre-health advisors uh, during pharmacy school was told me that I should consider uh, applying for the, the pre-health track as well. It would be a very easy transition because I was already in pharmacy school at the time and it would only be a few extra credits um, to basically get enrolled. Now the benefits of doing that would obviously be the access to all the information necessary. Like I said, um, they would give you counseling, uh, practice resources like pre-interview stuff and access to a committee letter, um, which we'll cover more. It's basically just a compilation or of your um, letters of recommendation, along with the university's uh, stamp of approval, which medical schools like to see, especially um, they wanna make sure that the students that are coming through are verified to be you know, who they say they are and are up to the quality that it takes to get into medical school. So I, I think that is a, a viable option for some people, but I also think it might be unnecessary. So you know, why pay the extra you know, tuition for extra credits when 95% of the information you're gonna get from them is gonna be accessible on this course. So like I said, pay, spend a couple hundred dollars on uh, I guess this course and you know external resources and stuff versus paying a couple grand for ex additional credits. Um, it might help you sleep better at night, but I, I don't think it's necessary. And it was something that I did not elect to do because of the added cost of the tuition. And it, I was already at that stage in pharmacy school where things were getting really, really busy and I didn't want to have to deal with any pre pre-medical um, like content uh, assignments and, and whatnot. So I figured I would just kind of piece my piece things together. Uh, and then it worked out for me, but it may be a viable option for yourself. So I, I recommend you do check it out just to even like ask a pre-health advisor to meet with them and kind of make sure you're covering all the details. Like this is what I want to do. And getting yourself on their radar can go a long way that, you know, you've kind of established that connection and then they might be able to help you out down the road. So I, I definitely recommend if you are at a university, you do check it out and kind of create that connection, but it's not something that I think you need to enroll in a pre-health course formally. You can, you can certainly get by without doing that. Um, for graduated pharmacists, uh, unfortunately, you don't have access to this at the time. You could consider reaching out to your alma mater or something along those lines, but um, it's just more of a, a good practice recommendation than it is a necessity. Um, and that concludes this lecture.